Okay, so let's talk about simplifying radical expressions. It turns out that radical, there's some properties of radicals that work for multiplication and division, but not addition or subtraction. Okay, so for example, if I take the nth root of a times b, that's going to be the same thing as taking the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Okay, so I can separate those in multiplication. So let me just give you a quick example. So let's say I'm going to take the square root of 100. It turns out that 100 is the same thing as 25 times Four, right so I can separate those factors of 25 and 4 because the square root of 100 is what 10 what's the square root of 25 what's the square root of 4 2 and 5 times 2 is also 10 but this does not work caution this does not work for subtraction or addition. So if I say the square root of, let's say, 64 plus 4, that would be the square root of 68, but that's not the same thing as the square root of 64 plus the square root of 4, right? Because that would be 8 plus 2 and eight plus two is 10, I didn't get the square root of 100 there, right? So we can't separate with addition and subtraction only with multiplication and division. So we're gonna be using this to um, do this idea of simplifying the radical. How does this work? So if I look at square root of 24, now if you did the square root of 24 on your calculator, you would just get a decimal because why? Why am I getting this? When I take the square root of 24, why do I get a decimal instead of a whole number? That's because the square root of 24 is what we call irrational. Okay, it's not a perfect square. But there are factors of 24 that are a perfect square. So 24 is the same thing as 4 times 6. Why did I pick 4? Well, that's because 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. Square root of 4 is 2. And then the square root of 6 just stays because we don't want, we're simplifying it. We're not wanting to have the decimal answer. But if I go back to my calculator and I say 2 times the square root of 6, notice that I get the exact same decimal answer. So all I've done is really simplify the radical. I've taken any perfect square out. Okay, so let's try um, another one. Here I have the cube root though. So I'm looking for a perfect cube. Can you think of a number, a perfect cube that is a factor of 24, meaning a number, what number times another number gives you 24? But one of them has to be a perfect cube. Eight times three, right? What is the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3? Cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 3, we don't know. It's not a perfect cube. And so if you wanted to check this on your calculator, remember you'd have to go to math to find the cube root. So there's the cube root right here, number 4. I'm going to take the cube root of 24, and again, I get a decimal number because 24 is not a perfect cube. But if I take 2 times, let's go math cube root. Oops, that messed up. Math cube root of 3, you notice how I get the exact same decimal number. Okay, any questions about that so far? So all we're doing is simplifying, looking for what perfect square could I take out? And by the way, I have something for you guys because sometimes people don't always know what these perfect squares are right away. So I'm going to give you this time table chart. And the reason why is because 
all along the diagonal, if I circle the numbers along the diagonal here, these are all the perfect squares. It doesn't come out so nicely with perfect cubes, okay, on the on the times table chart. You'd have to look look around for them. But any number times itself, that's why the five times five, it goes along the diagonal. So can you think of a perfect square that goes into 200 evenly? What would be the biggest perfect square that would go in? And you could look at the chart here to see 100. So if you write this as the square root of 100 times 2, that's the same thing as the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. So what part could get simplified? The 100. The 100 becomes 10, and the square root of 2 stays inside the radical. Okay, let's keep going. What about the square root of 48? And again, you could kind of come back to this idea like we're looking for, well, there, let's do another way because maybe you don't notice right away what, what perfect square goes into 48. So what you could always do is you take the number 48 and you start to factor it. You literally make a little, remember this, factor tree? What numbers can you think of? Just any two numbers, start with any two numbers that multiply together to give me 48. 24 times 2. Perfect. The 2 is prime, so we keep factoring the 24. What else? Any two numbers? 12 and 2. 12 times 2. Okay, there we go. And then keep factoring the 12. 6 times 2. And then keep factoring the 6. 3 times 2. So what we've done right now is these are the prime factors of 48. In order to have a perfect square, we, we, we need a number times itself. So I could write this as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times an extra 3. You see all of these numbers are prime. How many numbers do I need times themselves to make a perfect square? I need 2, right? So here, this is 4, this is 4. This is actually the same thing as 16 times 3, right? Six, square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Square root of 16 is 4. So we have 4 times radical 3, which we're really just going to put that 4 out in front of the radical 3. Are you kind of seeing that process of how I'm looking? I'm looking for a number times itself, which I had two of them, two perfect squares, essentially, or, or 16, which is a perfect square. Okay, I'm going to have you guys try a few more of these, and then we can come back and go over them together.